Callie McFarland, uh, and welcome to Genuine Nonsense. Christina Smars is off tonight. Uh, she is actually uh, still in her move, so she's off tonight. This is it. It's the last. Um, if you want to send messages of love and support to Christina Smars on her move, uh, I'm sure she would ap appreciate that. Moving is so stressful. Um, she actually hired my stepson and his friend, they're 15, to help her move yesterday, uh, some stuff. And first of all, I'm like, I can't carry, not that I've ever been able to like carry a ton of boxes, but yet to a certain age, you just don't want to move your stuff anymore. You just don't want to do it. It does suck. That's true. Cappy fear sucks. Um, so yeah, so we have a great show tonight. I have two great guests on tonight. Also, uh, we've talked about this before. I have incredibly uh, vivid and weird effed up dreams. So I had a doozy last night. So we're going to go to the dream dictionary and I'm going to look it up and we'll dissect it. Maybe Matt will come on, producer Matt, for that segment. Uh, to get us started, though, tonight, I'm so excited about this guest. Uh, she is uh, not only a friend of mine, uh, she's also someone that I love working uh, working with everywhere. And uh, just such a great uh this is, I hate it when people say this, so she's probably going to hate this, but we'll unpack it together. Uh, she's a well-rounded performer. It's like the best thing you could say, right? Um, I'm seeing in the chat that some people don't remember their dreams. I remember all my dreams, and they're usually really uh, friggin' out there, but we'll get to that later in the show. Please welcome my very good friend, Erin Harks. Hey, Hi, Kelly. Erin. Hi. Welcome. Hi. To I had no problem nonsense. with that intro. That's a nice thing to say. Oh my gosh, you're so like, I mean, you're funny and a fucking amazing human. So we'll just start with that. Um, however, you also are just like a hustler and super scrappy. <laughs> Thank you. You don't even know what to say to that. You're like, you have to be. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you have to be right. Um, I haven't so, had this much positive reinforcement in a while. Yeah. <laughs> It's throwing you for a loop. You're like, oh, I don't know what to say. It is. Um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I well, you're very humble too, I feel like. So like you get embarrassed whenever anybody gushes over you. But that's why we have people on this show, Aaron. Like we have guests so we can gush over their accomplishments. <laughs> and Matt, our producer Matt is, is rolling one right now. You just released an album last Friday called Zoloft and Probation. And it can be found everywhere. Yes. Oh, that's so exciting. And this is your first one, right? Your first comedy yes, album. Yes, it is. I'm, my first comedy album. I've had several musical albums before that, but this is my first comedy baby. So pretty excited oh my. about it. And you did the, who's the um label what label are you on like howl and war records out of toronto nice yeah they're doing a lot of yeah. cool stuff right that that label they really are yeah that's exciting and um, where Allison did you record it in door i met her i i recorded it in toronto amazing um allison door started the record label uh, a while back we, i met her at a comedy festival up there and uh, she definitely supports the uh, the underserved artists, or like you know the, you know the the women. Oh, I know men and I'm, whatnot, and so yeah. <laughs> I'm very. Aware. I love it. So I'm so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So I'm very blessed to have been on, on her label. That's amazing. Um, so that's cool. How is performing up in Toronto? Do you have a following up there? Um, there's definitely some people that come out to see me. I haven't been up enough to create a following i love the city and i love performing up there the only thing that i would have to say and it's not a negative thing at all is that everybody's just so nice so sometimes my jokes don't always land because they're like oh and i'm like no it's fine <laughs> <laughs> really push the baby like <laughs> uh, i feel bad you, for all my victims yeah right um it's that's so cool that you went up there to record it. And I'm sure you have a new fan base up there now that you've been. Well, I, maybe. 
I, when I when I go back, I'll let you know All right, cool. <laughs> when we're allowed back up there. I know, right? So you recorded this pre-pandemic then? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the end of uh, 2019, and it took a little while for it to get uh, finished because of everything that was going on. And I was patient. I, I wasn't going to rush it, you know, whenever they were ready. Yeah. And you're in New York. So yeah, New York going to Toronto, they must have been like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh, oh well, my. I'm in upstate New York, so it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, well, I play upstate New York and you you guys are pretty rough and tough up there, I think. I mean, there's, you That's know, sweet of you to say. <laughs> horseback riding and Stu Leonard's, but I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Stu Leonard's is actually south of here. Yeah, that's true. What do you have? Stuart shops, right? Stuart, yes. Stuart shops. Um, we and there's a debate over where whether you say Stuarts or Stuarts. Stuarts, which I don't get involved in politics. Yeah, me either. We don't discuss them on this show, really, uh, or at least tonight we won't. Okay, let's talk no. about this title title of the album, Zoloft and Probation. Can you explain for the listeners so they know what to expect? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's just the the, the tag of uh, one of my favorite jokes uh, that I told. It's a it's a story about when I went shopping one time, and um, it was it kind of reminds me of like uh, the Seinfeld episode with the shrimp store, the shrimp <laughs> store called they're running out of you, or the ocean called they're running out of you, the jerk store. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, how you, you come up with like the best comeback like hours later? So I was in the store and I found a skirt, you know, and I'm a I'm a robust female. I'm fine with it, you know, and um, but finding something in a store like Forever Twenty One is nearly impossible. And so I found a skirt. I gave it to the clerk, and she held it up, and and she's like, "Oh my god, I can't wear stuff like this because I don't have any hips." But you're lucky because you're thick. <laughs> and it was all I could do to not like dive over the counter <laughs> and choke her to death, and and like. Five minutes later, I was like, you're lucky I'm on Zoloft and probation. And I was like, damn it. Like, <laughs> oh. uh, did you find I'll it? I'll tell her when I return the skirt. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> when this skirt doesn't feel right for me. Um, do you, did you have a hard time naming the album? I, um, I always had a hard time naming. I mean, not like I have a million of them, but you, you put, you're also a musician. I mean, you've been doing both for so long. And I know you have a couple music albums out. What's was it harder to name this one than than music, or was it like easy? Or oh, I've done this before. It, it took me a bit. I actually got a little bit of help, like my my really good friend Jim uh, Jim Felter, who I work with quite a bit. Um, I was like, "What do you think?" And he wrote back almost instantly. And he was like, soul up and probation. I was like, oh my God, like it's genius. Why didn't Thank I you. Yeah. think of that? I yeah. had a few other yeah. like titles. Yeah. I was like, that's absolutely perfect. Like it didn't even, it wasn't even a question after he, after he wrote that. So I was like, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah it's easy when somebody gives you the answer. <laughs> yeah. It was easier to name my second one than my first one. My, my first one, Matt, there's a comic, um, Matt D, Matt Doniger, and he actually, he told me what I should name the first one. So I was like, perfect, because I don't know what to name it. And then the second one, I did exactly what you did. I just grabbed like the loudest bit and named it that. So with music, when you have an album. So now you, I'm actually, I. What? I didn't know that you had two albums and now I'm upset. And now I, I need to hop off and go listen to your other no, album. You can't. I'm you're, such a huge fan of You Got Up Today. I've you're, listened to it. Oh, my first a thousand one times. Thank you. And I know you'll text me sometimes and be like, hey, I'm on the treadmill and your album just came on. Um, yeah, nothing says working out like <laughs> Billy McFarland. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, my first one, it, there was such a difference between my, my first bike one. rides. I don't do the treadmill. Oh, yeah, they're bike ride. Um, I think there's such a difference. Like, uh, Speaking of Aaron's, Aaron Jackson also just put out her first album. Both of you are like veterans. So when I put out my first one, I'd been doing it a while, but it it was different when I put out the second one. Um, 
And how soon do you think you'll do another album? I know this one just came out, but. Oh, do we have you? I have a really bad connection. I'm making sure that I have everything else shut off, but I'm surprised that Erin only recently came out with one because yeah. she's she's just, a, she's a beast. She's so good. I, I, yeah. I, I'm surprised that that was her first one. She was just waiting for the right moment is what she kept telling me. But I, I missed your question. I, I apologize. Oh, that's okay. My question was, um, I, why, why did you wait so long? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I can't thanks. wait to hear it. She's amazing. No, to you, I'm asking, why did you wait so long? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I attempted to do one here in Albany uh, back in 2018. I had wanted to do one. I had actually asked you for some advice and talked to a few other uh, comedians that I knew. And I was going to do one and just getting all of the stars aligned. Uh, for me, I don't. Uh, because I'm a full-time musician, I don't get to pursue comedy as much as I would like. So it's like, I, I, I never felt like my act was like tight enough. And if I ever had a mm. bunch of shows in a row, like I, it would be, I, I, I didn't want to put all that money into a recording and have it be a busted night. Right. So I had one really great night at the Funny Bone. I didn't really like how the recording came out. Um, they, there were so many people there, which was awesome. I mean, we like oversold the place that like people were getting turned away. It was, it was funny. Cause like some weeks, like they don't get behind it enough and then I don't get behind yeah. it enough. And then like this time we both got behind it a lot and they had to send people away. I'm like, all right, we need to coordinate this a little bit better. So there were just some people that were just packed into the place that were not there for it. And it was yeah. just, it made it weird. So I didn't like how it came out. And then. Um, I had been talking to Allison for a long time and finally she was like, you know, if you want to come up and do one and we picked a date and, and I was like really nervous about it. And she was like, if you don't like how it comes out, she goes, we'll do two shows back to back and two different audiences. If you don't like yeah. how it comes out, we don't release it. And she was just so great to work with that it, it, it seemed fitting. I haven't listened to it yet because I am so used to having time in the car to listen to everything. And finally, we're doing live shows again. So I have live shows this week that I'll get to drive to. So I can't wait to listen to it. Um, you've been doing. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited to listen to it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I not only do I love working with you because you're so much fun to work with. Um, and you put on a great show. You're like, your production value is always top notch. Aww. Yeah, I well, love thank it. you. Um, and I think it's probably all your years in music, right? Would you agree that, I mean, you've been Yeah, traveling. it definitely helped. Did you get me? It definitely helped it like yeah it definitely helped the the transition having you know like the experience of being on stage with the comedy and just you know knowing enough about the performance aspect it's definitely a different animal but the music obviously helped yeah 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 um and are you you're back doing live shows um i really i have luckily been able to play uh since june it's not a regular thing i usually get like maybe once a week uh which is scaled way back from my usual four to eight times a week yeah. you know so yeah um but I'll, I'll take what i can i'll take what i can get it's been it's been nice it's starting to pick up a little bit but i'm cautiously optimistic yeah yeah well i mean there's something interesting that you did when the pandemic happened um was you have a lot of Aaron Hark's merch, which is awesome. And you opened a side gig called The Reluctant Retailer. <laughs> and one of my favorite things about it was not that, I mean, I love that you were like hustling and figuring out something else to do. Your Instagram posts about the feedback that customers would give you through your site is the best. Did you get all that? I will repeat. It's worth the repeat. Yeah. 
Aaron? I'm having really spotty Wi-Fi for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Is there someone I'm sorry, else? my Instagram posts? Yes, for the reluctant retailer, you had no. a lot of people that were um that your your customer service, you were like, I'm not here for customer service. Like if you order something, I'm gonna do what you asked me for. No. I'm Aww. sorry. Say it again. It keeps okay. cutting in and out. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? What about yes, customer service? I'm gonna put it in the private chat if it doesn't work. Um People okay. were your Instagram posts with people being so uppity about this side business that you were running. Like, oh, I think that like the anti maskers that were coming yes. after me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was like, buy your mask. And they were like, you know, swear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they were like, do. go fuck yourself. And I was like, do you want that on the right or left? You know, and. <laughs> did you want a blue mask or a white mask you know it was just like i just i had fun with them yeah we're also running a special on t-shirts so i can put go fuck yourself on your t-shirt too if you want um yeah yeah so weird people are so like crazy you made me a t-shirt at the beginning of the pandemic and i was gonna wear I it did. tonight um <laughs> And you mailed it to me, and it's a T-shirt that is a replica of a childhood shirt that I had made for myself when I was like six. And it's just my name in a, in quotations, Kel. It's the best shirt ever. I love it. I because you posted that old picture of yourself, and I, I did. Was like, I was like, you need an updated version of that, and, <laughs> and you and we did it. We did it together. I was seeing if I could find. You had like a side oh, yeah. by side. And, and I did a it side by amazing. side. It was, it was, it made all of my dreams come true. It was wonderful. That's friendship. I mean, if you're going <laughs> to yeah. take the time to make me a shirt, I'm going to follow through on my end of the bargain, you know? Um, yeah, you do great work. I know that's not your focus. And it's also easy to order shirts. If you have a shirt idea, anyone who's watching this, whether it's live or on the replay, um, Re the reluctant retailer and it's right on Aaron's website, aaronharks.com. Um, yeah, I love that so much. And your album is streaming everywhere and people can buy it on app on uh, iTunes or wherever you get your music, wherever they get it. Yeah. Wherever. Um, I know you have another show, so you have to jet, uh, in a few minutes. Is there any, um, anything else I missed that you've been working on that you want to promote? Um, not really. I have some new music on my, uh, Patreon page. I have a Patreon page, which is like, you can subscribe for like a dollar a month. And I write oh, nice. a really terrible song every once in a while and force you to listen to it and then oh force you to praise me for it. <laughs> you're being super humble. I think you're such an amazing <laughs> musician. Like you were doing those like, uh, happy hours streaming online, like, uh, like a lot of entertainers at the beginning of the pandemic and I mean I've heard you a million times and I would like totally like sit in and listen and yeah you're a very talented musician and singer well we still have to do a duet don't we you you uh tease I mean, me with some singing talk I don't think anybody wants that um except for us so maybe we'll just do it on the next car ride to our next gig Okay. Okay. There. Actually, I think I might have a date for you. I want to bring you back oh. out to Albany. Okay. Perfect. I love yeah, going so to we'll Albany, talk. Saratoga. I love that area. And I love that your what the joke on your album happened in that area. That to yes. me is like it's like oh, a yeah. homecoming. Every time you come, it's the hat store and the murder hotel. It's wonderful. The hat tastic <laughs> murder hotel. I love it. Hat tastic. Hat tastic. I don't even think that's the name. Oh, Matt's got the photo up. Yay! Yeah. So, <laughs> so thanks, Matt. So this is um, well, obviously, I know it's hard to tell which one is the old picture and which one's the new. So I'll just the um we should have a prize where we can figure it out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, the turtleneck with the t-shirt. That is such like a 70s. This, yeah. And the quotes. You I, see I, why this made me so happy? When that shirt arrived in the mail to me, I was like, you've got to be joking right now. And I had to honor you by doing it. I mean, that is 
the best, by the way, Matt. Thank yeah, you so much fantastic. for that. I oh, that made me warm all over in my heart, inside, <laughs> oh, outside. I love that. Oh my I god. I mean, there was like not much to look forward to in the beginning of it. And I just saw that. And I was like, please <laughs> let me make this for you. You're like, go for it. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, you were so serious. And I was like, okay, Aaron. And then oh, I showed up at my house and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like want to wear it. I was supposed to um, do a show that, you know, I said slowly everything got canceled last year. And I was like, oh, I have to wear this shirt at this show because I should be talking about how I designed my own nickname shirt when I was a kid. And I made my parents, I'm, I remember going with my mother to this place called On Top where they make shirts. And I was like, <laughs> I want those things around it. And my mom was like, uh, okay, why do you want those? And I was like, because that's not my actual name. It's a nickname. So I'm, I mean, the genius started so early with you, you know, uh, I mean, I feel like, or, or, or just like, I can't spell and it was happening even <laughs> back. <laughs> Five uh, letters is a commitment. I'll give you three. Right. I'm going to give you three. I can't give you my whole name and I don't no. want people to think I don't know my own name. Um, you're so wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the show. You oh, have thank you so much for having me. Another commitment tonight. I know that. So, uh, I'm going to drive people to your website, which is Aaron Harks dot com and they should follow you on instagram because you do some great stuff there as well and check out your album if i get trolled again i'll be sure to uh have some oh fun gosh. with the trolls and i should post that again just for old time's sake you know you know so i wish you would them. it's hilarious I, i'm going to do that all right good um i'm gonna tag right. you <laughs> Please do. All right. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. I love you too. I'll All talk right. to you so soon. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Erin. Bye. Erin oh, Harks, her new album, Zoloff and Probation, is out now wherever you get your streaming services or you purchase your music. So support an artist if you want. Um, so fun. Hey, Matt. Hey, Cal. Hey, bud. Hi. Um, I can't believe you found that side by side. I Did went you to your face. It was on your Facebook. I yeah. just, I just Fun. did a little, I just, uh, I'm like the guy in the chair in those superhero movies that, yes. you know, I've got six screens Yes. and I'm just, uh, You're just moving yeah, stuff around. Yep. Yeah. You don't even use a mouse anymore. You're like in the hunger games. You're the game master. It's like Tony Stark in the Marvel yes. movies. I'm like, yeah. Shrinking. And yeah. Um, did you ever, minority report when style. you were a kid, did you mm. ever make your own shirt, like design your own shirt? No. No, no, I was, I mean, the, the, uh, the, yeah, no, I never did. I guess I, no. I mean, that was a missed opportunity. <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, I guess, uh, but <laughs> I would buy that shirt. Like, I feel like that should be the cover of your album. I think you should do a comedy album and that's the cover is you Cal. with the two shirts and it's just called Cal. Cal. Yeah. Um, maybe I should just that, that should be my merch. I'm looking for merch for when I go back out on the road this year. So maybe oh, yeah. it's just a shirt that says Cal on it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a horrible thing to sell. Be a horrible thing. Um, I love that so much. Um, so you had a dream last night. I did. Is our other guest here yet? She just got she, <gasps> you literally you spoke her into existence. I mean, that's uh, how I do it. That's <laughs> how I, I don't. Um, let's go with the next guest and then we'll end on. Some okay. We'll end analysis. on the dream. Um, Fantastic. all right. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Um, this next guest on the show, uh, another hilarious, amazing entertainer that I just think is like top notch human being on the planet. Uh, actually some of you may recognize the name because she's been doing stand up for I think 19 years, she just hit 19 years and has performed in the Boston area and everywhere beyond. We're gonna talk about it. Please welcome to the show, Liz Mealy. Hi. Dude. I miss your face so much. I miss your face. Can we stop for a second and talk about this haircut? <laughs> I'm just curly you now. I got, I went right down. I was just like, I wanna, I wanna Kellyfy my life. <laughs> Can you Kelly McFarlane my head? Your hair, since I've met you, which I mean, now we're talking 15 years or something like that. 
you've had this long curly hair and I saw your post the other day when you cut it and I was like, oh my God, I love it. And what's, what's wrong? Who hurt you? I was like, what <laughs> happened? My baby. Oh my God. <laughs> um, no, I love it. Are you, do you feel lighter? Do you just feel lighter? And so, so you don't have curly hair, so you, you won't I don't. know. My hair is always a knot that looks kind of okay. So like, like it was funny because, um, do you know John Josh Johnson? Yes. So yeah. Josh has a new joke about he grows his afro out and a bee got mm -hmm. stuck in it over the summer. He was like, you know, you tell you know we've been going around mm -hmm. telling people don't touch black people's hair, and now I'm like, touch my hair. There's a bee in it. <laughs> Get and it out. Like, yeah. I I literally I saw him the other day. I was like, I've I've had several bees in my hair. Like it is <laughs> it is a problem. And like this is like the like I washed it today, so it's like controlled curly. But yeah. every every day I don't wash it, it just becomes more tangled and more things get trapped in it. So when it was long, I mean, I would wash my hair and I'm just like detangling it for like 20 mm -hmm. minutes, and I I was just tired of it. Like I've literally yeah. had the same haircut for 20 years. My hair I've been to the same hairstylist for. 13 years. And when I told oh her, gosh. she's like, shut up. She was so excited. She's like, she like, didn't even listen to what I was saying. She's like, I'm yeah. just cutting it all off. She went into like a, a trance and was like, and then I'm straightening it and I'm going to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first time I met you w w years ago, we were at, I mean, we knew of each other because we had the same college agent. Yeah. I mean, I'm going way back. You, we were in Atlanta for the laughing skull festival yeah. and you're, we were at breakfast with a bunch of comics and your hair was like in these cute braids with a headband. And I remember being like, oh my God, Liz, I love your hair. And you were like, you have no idea. I was like, you it's have no gross. idea. That's why it's braided. It's disgusting. You're like, <laughs> I'm going to look like this every day you see me. So just thank you for saying you like it, but I'm not taking these braids out. Um, so yeah, I love it. I think it looks great. I love it. And I just didn't know if maybe you cut it because you're an author now. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was just like, as a published author, just so you know, my little brother's with me, and I've oh, been saying God. it. I was like, as a published author, um, is, yeah. oh, do you need me to get that as a published author? He's like, just hand me a napkin, Liz. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Wait, is your brother living with you now? Oh, no, he's just here for a couple of weeks. He, he's, he's just hanging out. He lives with my parents, and then quarantine, and then life. Yes. Uh, he, just, he needed a break. I love it so much. Um, well, let's talk about it. You just wrote a book and it just came out. Is it? Did it just come out today? It came out today. Thank you for oh, asking. Me, this right here? Yeah. This thing with my name on it? And it's called Why Cats Are Assholes, which I have questions. I have so many questions. Yeah. So um, thank you. Producer Matt just put the link in the chat. So if people want to check it out. Thanks, Producer um, Matt. Yeah, Producer Matt's the best. Um, you have a cat named Pasta that you worship. So cats are assholes now? Yeah. But okay. You, come on. As a comedian that knows other asshole comedians but still yes. loves them despite their flaws, that's really what it is. It's like I, I can see them for who they are and I like them. I was saying this to somebody – and not realizing what I was saying, because I just I did go through a breakup. Not recently. I wasn't like breakup haircut. I don't want that to yeah. put, put out there. It was breakup, breakup haircut book. Six yeah. months, have a book come out haircut. Yeah. Um, so, but um, I kind of realized I was like, oh, I my cat has made me accept her as she is. Like this is you know, there's good parts of her, there's bad parts of her, but she's never going to change. And I just love her as she is. I'm not saying I don't yell at her. I'm not saying she doesn't piss me off. But I love her wholeheartedly. And I was like. Should have done that in my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a follow-up book coming yeah. and it's all, everything I need to know about love I learned from my cat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I love it because pasta has been such like a part of your stand-up, I feel like. Yeah. And every sketch you've written that <laughs> you've made into a short and... Yeah, I mean, I don't even know how to unpack everything that you've done. And I think you probably have some fans in this area because people just love Liz. They love you. And I think it's because you're one of those comics that just doesn't apologize. You're like, oh, I'm just going to fucking do what I want. And uh, I hope you like it. And uh, I'm just going to work hard. And then you'll all see. Like you've... Uh, You've got I think that's how we I think that's how we bonded because I think yeah. I think you get into this business because you love comedy, you want to make people laugh, you feel like you have a unique perspective. 
And just because the industry or the masses don't go, yes, doesn't mean that you aren't interesting, that you aren't funny, right. that you don't have a unique perspective. So I've just kind of been like, how, like, I'm very fortunate that it's, my cat's about to cry. This oh, just oh. pick her up. Yes. Fine Hi. pasta. Hi, Hi, pasta. pasta. <laughs> um, I've done like three podcasts today and she's been in my lap for all, in my lap for all of them. Um, <gasps> She's an old lady now. She's, I'm I very, say, how old is she? She'll be 16 in May. Oh, Basta. I know she's like 80. No. It's okay. Um, but I think there's a, there's a part of you that like, it, it takes time for you to understand that like, not everybody's going to flock to what you're doing, but it doesn't mean you don't have value. And then we kind of are very fortunate that we're in the age where you can put out your own albums. You can put your own yeah. videos out. You know, I put my own special out in May. I produced it myself. I put it out myself. Um, honestly, this book being published by a like a, a publisher is probably the most mainstream thing I've done. <laughs> um, but in general, I think I've always just, I, I'm not going to change. And I like what I like. And I, I'm fortunate that over the last couple of years, my crazy cat lady people have found me. I well, you mentioned the special, right? And a lot of people were putting tons of stuff out during COVID. And I saw that you put out your latest special and folks can just go watch it, right? Like it's like yeah, it's you're like, amazing. oh, I think I want a special. So now I'm gonna do this. But this feels very much and I'm sure everyone asks you to talk about this. So I'm sorry, but I have to as well. When you were in high school, you started doing stand-up. Yeah, I started when I was 16. Yeah, you were taking the train in by yourself and you wrote a letter to one of my favorite comedians. Yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a letter to like 45 comedians, but only two people got back to me, by the way. <laughs> and will you please tell the listeners who don't know you who wrote back? Uh, two people did. Judd Apatow got back to me and I actually talked to him recently and he was like, oh God, thank so so happy I'm nice. I was nice because yeah. I I, I, um, I scanned it and I sent it to him. And then uh, George Carlin called me when I was 15 because I wrote all these emails. Um, I think I was 15 and I wrote to like all these people and my dad told me to format it like a business letter. So it was like my name, my address, uh, my phone number and my email. And I only, I found, I found an address on the internet. I don't know what it was, but it turned out to be his office. He went to an office every day. Yeah. And so he called me and he talked to me for 10 minutes and I, my dad told me to write down these notes cause you'd forget. So I actually have the notes on a note card. And then I kept him, I kept him in the loop. Like when I first started doing stand up, I was written up in the New Yorker when I was uh, 18 or 19. And I sent him, I mailed him a copy of the the thing. He called me up to be like, I read it. It was awesome. I didn't know people I mean... would hand out flyers for stage time. That's so cool. And I was like, it's not cool as much as sad, but, <laughs> um, and then I think when I was in high school, after that, he got me tickets to go see him in New Brunswick with my friends. Um, he sent me a signed book. I got lunch with him when I was 19. I, I kept him in the loop literally until like the day he died. Cause um, two days before he died, I was supposed to make my first TV appearance. And I emailed him to be like, I'm going to be on TV. And he's like, I'll watch it. And then sadly <laughs> and then he passed away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I love, uh, well, I mean, I love everything about your stand up, the cadence, the ideas. I love all of them. what I love about you the most. And producer Matt makes fun of me. Cause I only have people on that. I love. I don't That's how it should be. I know. So what I love about you though is it's such a great like life lesson that like, oh, you want something? Well, go fucking get it. <laughs> like, like that's I that's how when I met you that first time, and I've got a couple years on you, we'll just call it a couple. It's <laughs> like it's it was I remember walking away from that trip and being like, I mean just go get it. Like if you want it, go get it. And it does. She's so young and like going for it. And if, it doesn't matter how old you are. Right. So like, I love that about you and you're fucking hilarious. I'm swearing a lot because I'm excited and tired. No, I, that's, I'd swear even what I'm not excited or tired. I know. It's also I know. I think, how you communicate. It when, is when you have love. Yeah. Yes, when there's love, when you're feeling passionate. Um, but if we can yeah. have a love, if we can have a love fest, I think I walked away the same way when I saw you. You, I mean, you're so yourself. Like I, it's funny because I, I, I still listen. I love listening to comedy, so I listen Me to too. your albums. I love when you pop up on Sirius XM. For some reason, they play the same. I don't know if you look at your your sound exchange mm -hmm. and they show the bits. Oh, yeah. I'm like, 
And I'm like, I have other bits. Like it almost makes me angry. But the bit that they always play is actually one of my favorite, which is about, was it the, the, um, is it the pine cone? Yes. Yeah. A thousand pine cones is like, well, it kept me afl afloat during the pandemic. Yeah, thank yeah. you everyone. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, yeah. A thousand pine cones. And yeah, same thing. Right. I, uh, I feel like every time I see one of my favorite friends on Sirius, they do this with Carmen Lynch too. Yeah. Like it's always the same one. I'm like, don't you ever pe play any of their yeah. other stuff? Please? I literally have three hours of material I've given you. Even <laughs> I will. And what's funny. So yeah. I don't know if you do this. So when I hear you, I listen the whole way through. Cause in my mind, I'm sending a message, even though yes. I know, but, and I love the bit, but like anybody that I love, if they come up on serious, I won't change the channel. Me if too. I don't, if I don't want to listen to it, I'll just put it down a little bit. But I, I will not change it because I'm just like, right. we need to make sure people can feed themselves. And then if it's me, I just mute it. Like I make it really low because I don't want to hear myself, but I also right. want the money. But yeah. I do. <laughs> so but true. Like, I'm like, that's my, that's my way of helping my friends pay their bills. Yes. I'm just like, I'm like, oh, Kelly's on again. I'll either recite it from heart. Yeah. Or I'll roll down the window, give somebody else that essence. Enjoy, Kelly. Please. Please enjoy my friends. Um, that's so funny. So it's, can we talk about your specials for a second? Because, yeah. well, I want to take an even further step back. And then I'm going to let you go. Because I know, I mean, I grabbed you last minute. You have another commitment. You're so busy. I love it. You just had a book come out. My God. This is how um, Hoda Copy does all of her interviews as well. Lots <laughs> of F-bombs. And yeah. Yeah. Um, you've been to Edinburgh. And I, a lot of the people that uh, tune into 2MB on Twitch, uh, this channel, they're performers and they're writers and artists. Um, how is Edinburgh? Do you, would you do it again? Did you love it? What's the deal? Let's start with how you say it because I got yelled at for like oh, three am I months. Saying it? And I'm Ed Scottish, so I'm Edinburgh. really- Yeah, throw it away. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah, thank you. Just throw, Edinburgh. throw it away. But I would, I would say Edinburgh and they're like, what? And I was like, I don't know, like borough, like what? New York City boroughs. And they're like, Ugh. <laughs> um, you're like, I live in Brooklyn, so I don't know what you expect. <laughs> I will say this from all the all the lovely compliments you've given me. I think the hardest thing I ever did was that festival, both getting yeah. ready for it. The research like I interviewed every English comic I had met beforehand about the best way to go about it. every American comic because it's such a different experience yep. for American comics. So like Ophira Eisenberg, I think Todd Berry, um, a couple of other comics kind of told me, you know, and then different experience levels because like Todd going, going to Edinburgh is very different than, you know, if um, somebody else did um, that's like, you know, isn't right. on TV. So I did all this research. I figured it out. I was very fortunate. I submitted to a bunch of places. I got to one that was like, think of it as like, there's four big venues. And if you work that venue, you are prestige, like you get more press and people will come to it just because you're at that venue. So the same way that like, because I work the seller, people give me a little more leniency if they've never heard of me, as opposed to if I'm just a regular comic or if you've been on, you know, late night or something. So I get one of the venues. I started getting really good press, but it was a, a 60 seater and you have to do it every single, you're doing your hour every single night. And then I was doing little shows every day and then exit flyering to like, you know, I do a 10 minute or 20 minute or 15 minutes here and then eg exit flyer and tell them about my show. So I was doing like two, three small shows during the day. Then every day at 5.30, I'd do my hour. And then this, I got booked on another show where I did 20 minutes every night. And again, I'm exit, I was doing about three to five shows every single night, including my hour. And I had been touring for two months beforehand overseas. I was, um, most people lose their voice or get yeah. sick three weeks in. I got sick three days in. Uh. But the best advice, my buddy Tom, who's an English comic, he gave me this advice. He goes, don't go in thinking you're going to win the festival and everything's going to work out. He's like, have goals for you. And then you won't feel clouded or disappointed if, if these bigger goals don't get met. So my goals going in were to polish my hour because I was going to try to turn that into a special and at the very least another album. Um, get my name out there in the UK and in and, and, um um, in Europe because I wanted to continue. I was already starting to tour for the last three years and then get an agent. It's much easier to get an agent yeah. in the UK than it is in the US. But you, I was already like 
featuring most places and headlining smaller places. But if I wanted to be on TV there and if I wanted to headline more there, I had to get an agent, but it was easier. But you had to, everybody's like, you have to do the festival. So those are my goals. And like, I was getting great press early on. I, my hour, I would say a weekend, I was like super happy with my hour. Um, and then I did a couple big things. And then, um, you know, Orlando Baxter, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I had met Orlando at a show in Massachusetts like a year before, and he was actually very helpful in getting me um, prepared for it. And he was also like, he was, there's a few people that are like, you're going to cry. Like, it's going to be yeah. sad and it's going to be tough yeah. and you're going to cry. So just get ready to cry. And I was like three weeks in and I was like, I haven't cried yet. And then I had a show where two people showed up on a Friday, by the way, not like a Tuesday, like on a Friday. And they were going to make me do the show. And I was exhausted. And I was like, I'm not doing a show for two people. That's one right. person more than me. Like, I'm not doing. And so <laughs> so the the sound girls look like, I don't think you can cancel it, though. Like, if people are here, you have to go. She's like, I'll go check. And so she checks. And they go, you're going to have to do the show. And I did this. You'll love this. I went, OK, can you hold on a second? And she's like, sure. And I just went, <laughs> and I just started hysterically <laughs> crying with my back to her. Yeah. And then I turned around, and she goes, let me check one more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't even like it. I If you're not a performer and you're watching this performing for 10 people, people think that the more people you perform for, the harder it is. I disagree. The bigger the venue, the bigger yeah. the audience, I think it's so much easier yeah. because there's already energy. There's a vibration in the room. Yeah. When there's a small crowd, if they're not with you, it is you're giving everything you have to these two people. So yeah. did you end up having to do it? No. So she comes back. She's like, you don't have to do it. They're going to refund it. And I was like, thanks. And I sat down on the stage and I was like, do I have to leave? She's like, no, you have the room for an hour. And I just sat there and <gasps> cried. Yeah. So I cried for like another 15 minutes. And then me and Orlando had our shows at the same time. And I had this like epiphany and I was like, I'll go see a show. And so I texted him. And of course he was already performing. So I couldn't yeah. get in or whatever. And I ended up not being able to see it. But then I called him afterwards and I was like, I cried today. He's like, that's all right. That's all right. He's like, he's like, do you want to hang out at this bar later? I was like, I do. I do <laughs> like, very much. He's, he's a great person when you are feeling down too. Cause yeah. Orlando is one of the loveliest Oh human my God. being. So oh my fun. gosh. So funny and just the kindest person. But flip it back. I had had all these meetings with agents and in my mind I was like, oh my God, Cinderella story. It's all going to work out. But I, everybody was like, you know, nice meeting you, but nobody wanted me. And I was like, oh, maybe it's not as easy as people said it was. And then Orlando recommended me to his agents. They came to the second to last show I was doing. So keep in mind, I've done this show <laughs> so many times. I'm like a robot on stage. I, my bags were packed a week before I was leaving. I was so fucking ready yeah. to get out of there. Like, and it's, a, so I think a month is too long. It was the law of diminishing returns. Like, I feel like the first two weeks I was the best stand up comic I ever was. Yeah. And then the last two weeks I was the worst stand up comic I ever was. I was just, I was performing, but it was like, it really was like a monologue. I didn't care anymore. I was so tired. I was going to so say, you're tired, right? Like you're in, you're in Scotland. You're exhausted. I, if people don't know, you have to choose either two weeks or the whole thing, right? Which yeah. is a month. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. So it was, <sighs> I was just, and I had been touring and maybe it wasn't the smartest, but I had been touring for two months earlier. Too. So I literally had been gone for over three months by the end of it. And I made great friends and I did, it, every, it was a positive experience, but I was, I was done. Like I was exhausted. Yeah. And so he invites his eight and he told me, and I was my, I never sold out, but I would get up to like 55 people, but I was always a, between like 15 and 55. And I would average about 30 people, which is decent for a 60 seater yeah. for a month. Um, but I was like, so I was like, I was helping flyer. I hired more flyers. My friend, like everybody's trying to help me pack this room. I think I ended up getting 25 people. The guys before me or after me were like a sketch show. And I was like, will you come to my show? Like I had gone to theirs. So like, absolutely. So I do this show. They're not good. And the agents are there. They're not good. It's not a good crowd. It's like a lot of people, but it's just not a good crowd. Yeah. The three guys that I asked to come that were other performers were awesome. And then there was two women in the back that were laughing and that was it. So you have five people enjoying you. Uh -huh. I'm a robot. I'm so yeah. dead inside. And I'm like, well, I guess this isn't going to work out. And then the two women in the back came up to me afterwards and were like, 
Orlando sent us. We love oh. you. Do you have time for a drink? And they picked me by 3 a.m. that day, which is weird to do deals at 3 a.m., but that's Edinburgh. By 3 a.m., um, I had an agent. I'm talking pasta. Seriously. Um, so, Excuse me, meow. So I met kind of all my goals. So even though I was exhausted and I cried like everybody said I would, I, I, <laughs> it was a really positive experience. I don't know if I would do it again, if I'm being honest. At least yeah. not at the level that I had to do it. You know right. what I mean? I would want it to be a bit cushier if possible. Um, <laughs> but I'm, it was, it was so hard and it was so different than anything that we have festival wise or even performance wise here that yeah. it, I learned so much about myself and about my craft and, and what I was capable of doing on my own. I mean, I found out who to make flyers from. I hired flyers. I figured out venue. Like I did everything on my own and of course i made mistakes but like that's what it, me doing my own albums me doing my own special this year me even writing this book like everything that i've kind of had no idea what i was doing i was like well i clearly figure most of it out and so right. i'm i think that's the best thing you can tell any i think anybody in anything you're doing but especially in the arts like the internet exists and people have done stuff before you why not just get a little bit of <laughs> You know, I do a lot of talking to people. Like even th those letters I wrote when I was 15, she's just yeah. a pain in the butt. She just wants to be around. Yeah. You see me murder my cat on the day of my yeah. uh, my book published uh, day. I'm just like, I'm just like, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. What a great publicity stunt that Liz yeah, I do. I kept her yeah. alive just long enough. I did dedicate the book to her. She got equal dedication to my parents. Oh, um, well, that's fair. Yeah, no. I mean, my mom has pretty much kept her alive for 16 years. I've done Aww. nothing. Well, your mom's but, a vet, right? Yeah, she's a veterinarian. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, cat grandma. Um, yeah. <laughs> but she, I, I think in general, before podcasts, before all these books about comedy, before, you know, even the internet, I, I, I just asked people. And my dad really encouraged that. My dad told a bunch of stories about how he got through vet school and started his own business. And so... I'm always very open to people asking me advice. I just did a women's panel maybe like a month ago and I told them, I was like, message me, ask me questions. Like I, I can't tell, you know, you do get to a point now in our careers where it's just so different. I try to keep up on trends. I'm on TikTok, yeah. you know, I'm doing the stuff, but you know, there's some things that they're doing, especially like, like, um, my ex, my ex-boyfriend was a younger comic than me. So he, when I met him, he'd only been four years in. And this Scandalous. was scandalous. I know he was older. Shut up. Um, but he was doing open mics. Like he was doing some stuff and he would open yeah. for it, but he was also doing open mics and they have these little chips that if you stay for the whole show, the next time you can go on early and like all this stuff. And I was like, Oh, we just like had to sit there for four hours. Right. Like, and you didn't know when you were going on. And it was like, it was like a different, like now it's like, I, even like comics doing like Zoom, I know it was because of the pandemic, but even these right. Zoom open mics, I'm like, that is awesome. Like that is such a yeah. cushy experience to what, how we started out. Well, also like my thought is, well, to take a step back, I've called you many times and been like, hey, can I ask you a question? And you're like, don't be timid, dude. What the fuck? Just yeah. ask me anything. <laughs> um, and I love that because you do say that. I mean, you, you've always been that way. Um, I want to make sure we plug a couple things. You've been doing Zoom Diner, right? Yeah. Which is your Zoom comedy show. Yeah. Yes. And that is on Instagram Live. I uh, know. You buy tickets. You buy you, tickets. Yeah, it's pay what you can, and it's on it's on Zoom. So it's like, okay. and, and it's once a month. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it. I keep. Right. It's like I I was going to stop it last month, and I was like, "Do you guys still want this?" And they're like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Okay." But it's just a way for comics to work out new material and workshop it together. And it's been, I've written 45 minutes in a pandemic. Like so that's good. insane to me. Yes, agreed. Agreed. Um, if people follow you on Instagram though, you post all that stuff out there and they can find information. And then I want to make sure we tell people where they can find your albums and your special. Because yeah, yeah the book's on Amazon. Um, yes, on anywhere you get a book, you can, you can get the book. <laughs> Where you buy books, just get a book. Just get and a book, guys. Oh, and the, we should give a shout out. The illustration, so oh, cute. Yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea's amazing. So I, I found her art, and my editor loved her art, and I was so excited. It's Chel Chelsea uh, Trout Trousdale. I should probably learn how to say her name, but probably you should could. follow her um, on Instagram. She's incredible. But she just had the most expressive animals, 
And I told her my idea for the cover and what she made was, I just love her. She's awesome. It's so cute. And I, I have a few friends who are cat, like they love cats and I already am like, pasta, get your butthole out of my show. <laughs> um, and I already am like, oh, I'm going to order this book as a gift for those Yay. people because they're, it's like the perfect, charming. You, you learn stuff. Yeah. And you learn stuff. Yeah. Um, and your special is, where can people watch your special that you put out? So my newest special is called Self Help Me. It's free on YouTube. Um, but I also like my little comedy anniversary was a couple days ago. So a year ago, I put out my first um, hour, just the video of it. It wasn't even a special. It was just like the video from the audio from the album, um, just because we were all locked in. And so that's on there too. So Emotionally Exhausting is my first album that's free on YouTube. Um, that show I did in Edinburgh, I, yeah. I actually um, recorded... Um, I recorded it in London for a submission for something. And I was so tired when I got back, I was like, I'm never doing this hour again. So I just took the audio. So it's not the best quality, but my second album is you can buy or stream called Mind Over Melee. I was just going to say, is that my, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's the one that I, I did in uh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Um, Edinburgh. And, and then Self Help Me is also free on YouTube. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you for taking the time to come hang out with me. Thanks for asking me. And it's I'm so good to see you. I miss you too. As soon as we can do whatever, I will um, see you in person. I know we will. Yeah, I need that. I need that in yeah. my life. Me too. Me too. Um, congratulations on everything. And I can't wait to get your book. And yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. Well, well, well. All right. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. Liz Mealy. Uh, and I think she said it Millet, which I've known her for a long time. And I, I, she's so funny and talented. Please check her out. Follow her. Uh, you will not regret it. Okay. Little recommendation from me to you. We were going to unpack my dreams tonight, but I mean, we had two guests and it was all wonderful. Uh, thank you to Aaron Harks. Aaron Harks' new album, uh, Zoloff and Probation, is available wherever you get your streaming uh, comedy and music. And Liz Mealy, her new book, uh, Why, Cat or, Why Cats Are Assholes, that book is on Amazon and Matt put that in the chat. Um, if you stand by right here on 2MB, uh, there's another show coming up. I'm pretty sure it's Boy Detectives are up to their old shenanigans tonight. Um, and also, don't forget, uh, you can subscribe to 2MB on Patreon now. And Matt just put that link in the chat. Smars will be back next week. And so will I for a lot more genuine nonsense. Thanks. Yeah.